I am a handmaid, a BAFTA handmaid. My name is Ofcom. I had another name, Stephen Mangan, but there was already one of those in equity. I'm forced by my dystopian overlords, the BAFTA committee, to perform all kinds of degrading tasks, like playing Scrabble late at night with Joseph Fiennes. I'm sure line of duty is one word. And spending hours in terrible isolation, watching dehumanizing propaganda. Awards which recognize and celebrate the skills of British television talent. British television talent. British television talent. Proclaimed we. We are commanded to travel everywhere in pairs. Good morning, Ofcom. Morning, Ofsted. Nice cloak. Is it handmade? Is it handmade? Do you get it? Is it handmade? And are you laughing in there? I can't see if you're laughing. Where are you going? Oh, I'm presenting the Craft BAFTAs. Surely you mean the British Academy Television Craft Awards in 2018? Yes, yes, I, I, I do mean that, the, the British Academy Television Craft Awards in 2018. Under BAFTA's eye? Under BAFTA's eye. Bless it be the fruit. Fruit? What fruit? I'm not doing it for fruit. I thought it was a three-course meal. Yeah, served at midnight. My name is Ofcom. I am a BAFTA handmaid. And I plan to survive. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Stephen Mangan. Good evening, a very warm welcome to the British Academy Television Craft Awards in 2018, awards which recognise and celebrate the skills of British television talent. Our television is lauded and admired the world over, and not just for Channel 5's restless leg syndrome, Desperate for Help. Tonight is our opportunity to pay tribute to the outstanding talent and expertise we have in this country and to honour those individuals whose work stands out in an already impressive field. What a year it's been. Outrageous plot twists, improbable plot lines, larger than life characters. I'm not talking about TV, I'm talking of course about the news. What is going on in the world? They used to say it was as if the news was written by the team behind the thick of it more recently as though by the writers of Black Mirror. No disrespect, but for a bit, could the news please be written by the writers of Love Island instead? <laughs> but never mind the pussy-grabbing mango Mussolini over the water. Never mind the nuclear escalations, the abuses of power, the corruption, the incompetence. Tonight we're going to talk about the things that actually matter. Television. <laughs> yeah. We might as well enjoy ourselves while we can. Today, they're only harvesting our data. Tomorrow, they'll be harvesting our organs. After all, we're in a room with the brains behind Line of Duty, This Country, Blue Planet 2, Peaky Blinders, Inside Number 9, Catastrophe, and dozens of more brilliant programmes. Leading the way tonight with seven nominations, it's the second series of The Crown.
The Crown. The Crown, if you haven't seen it, what are you, a communist, is the story that takes us back to the glorious certainties of yesteryear, when everyone knew their place, public servants placed duty before self-interest, and women were paid considerably less than men. How we've moved on. Taboo has garnered an impressive six nominations. Four of which four of which are for visual aspects of the programme. Costume design, makeup and hair, photography and lighting, and special visual and graphic effects. Like its leading man, Taboo is very easy on the eye. I do him. I have done him. I did him. I do him again. As in the news, the line between what constitutes comedy and drama seems to be harder and harder to define these days. The only fail-safe way on television to know if something is a comedy or a drama is to check how many awards it's been nominated for. I'm not saying comedy is treated as the poor relation to draw. I am, I am saying that, I'm saying that. Anyway, BAFTA recognises this anomaly and for the last five years they've awarded two writing BAFTAs. A BAFTA for those who write comedy and a BAFTA for those who can't. <laughs> Another show which caught the public's imagination in a massive way was Blue Planet 2. <laughs> it's, it's a glorious testament to mankind's extraordinary scientific advancements, mankind's jaw-dropping developments in filming techniques, and to mankind's ability to shit titanic amounts of plastic into its own backyard. Uh, that was on the BBC, of course. Talking of the BBC, have you bought your apartment at the old TV centre in White City yet? Um, while doing some work on mine, I found a Blue Peter time capsule <laughs> under the floorboards, which contained a steps calendar, a Tamagotchi, and a signed photo of Andy Peters. Uh, I did phone the BBC and said I dug up something from the 90s. Seemed to send them into a bit of a panic. <laughs> Right, let's get on with it. As a country, we really punch above our weight. Our television is the envy of the world. Let's celebrate that fact tonight. Finally, and this is something from my own personal experience, and I say it every year, please, please don't fret over winning or losing. You really don't need to win an award to validate yourself as a human being. <laughs> Not winning an award doesn't mean you're a bad person, OK? <laughs> just means you're not very good at your job. <laughs> so, here we go. The Craft BAFTAs 2018. A big thank you to our official craft partner, Harman. We kick off as ever with the award for Breakthrough Talent, sponsored by Sarah Putt Associates. <laughs> to present this award, one of BAFTA's own Breakthrough Brits and a former nominee, Ruth Maidley. Good evening. I'm honoured to be here presenting the BAFTA for Breakthrough Talent, the award that says, congratulations on your successes. Now be prepared for people to assume you're too busy to be worth calling for the next two years. Here are the nominees. Breakthrough Talent. Bernard McMahon, Alison McGorty, American Epic, The Sessions. He walked in a hotel and everybody left. He looked in the glass and just smiled to himself. Cause he's a little, little baby on the sky. Would you marry me again? Tom Percy, Fighting Cancer, My Online Diary. Somewhere on our actual anniversary this year. Might be the last chance I get all my friends and family together like that. I don't want it to be an upset one where everyone starts crying, asking you how you are. I just, just want it to be a happy party where everyone's having a good time. I didn't mean it to be soppy and like, Ugh. I just wanted her to know that I still love her. And I'm gonna miss her. Get out. 
You know what? You tried to shape me into your image. Well, are you happy now? I've lost Gemma. Charlotte Wolf, Inspector George, George Gently. And what about Rachel? What's she going to do when she has to decide between being a detective and having a family? Oh, You've put impossible expectations on her, just like you did with me. John. I thought you had a future. Oh, well, it's not your future anymore, is it, George? Look, the old chief. What's going to be left behind when you go? Nothing. So, what's that one? That's a pig. All right. So, who's that? That's friends. Daisy May yeah. Cooper, Hard Charlie Hard. Cooper, This Hard Country. Hard. That's Justin Bieber, Fred Flintstone, Spock, Stig of the Dump. All right. Who's it, this? Me. Oh, right. You're really good. I know. And the BAFTA goes to fellow breakthrough Brits, Daisy May Cooper and Charlie Cooper for this country. Um, well, just being here is amazing, so um, thank you to BAFTA for that. Um, there's a lot of people who work so hard on the show, and it means the world to us, and yeah. I think we should thank them now, shouldn't we? Yeah, I want to say a massive thank you to Shane Allen, who saved our lives, um, Chris Sussman, Damien Kavanagh, Kathy and Rachel Mason, the amazing Simon Mayhew Archer and Tom George. Um, and um, mum and dad. Mum and dad. Yes, yes. But thank you so much. You. Amazing. <laughs> Editing fiction now to present this award, Poldark's dreamiest couple, after Aidan Turner's buttocks, obviously, Elise Chapel and Harry Richardson. Behind every good show is a truly great editor. Turning the raw materials of performance and photography into something with rhythm, pace, and true depth. The nominees are... Editing Fiction. Dan Roberts, Peaky Blinders. Are you a member of a Masonic organization? Andrew John McClelland. Line of duty. I wouldn't do that if I were you, DC Despot. That makes you an active participant in denying me my rights under police regulations to defend myself. Are you or are you not a Mason? Una Nigonila, three girls. Pia de Chaula. The Crown.
And the BAFTA goes to... Una Niganila, the three girls. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely blown away. Thank you so much, BAFTA. Um, I, I'm very humbled by this because I was so honoured to be nominated alongside Andrew and my great friend Pia and Dan Roberts. Oh, I have to take a little moment. I wasn't expecting this. Uh, thank you so much to my brilliant director, Philippa, who brought such an exciting vision. <laughs> Philippa brought such an exciting vision and compassion and integrity to the way she directed this show and I, she was an absolute joy to work with. And thank you so much to Nicole Taylor, our brilliant writer, and Sue Hogg and Simon Lewis. Um, together we actually just found a way to make this series and one of our greatest gifts is our friendship that we've formed over this process. I want to thank um, Casarella Marsh, my agents, and uh, Izzy Curry, my assistant, uh, Films of 59, Matt Gray, the brilliant DOP who shot the most beautiful rushes. Um, I have to thank my beautiful husband Julian and my two kids who are going to be really thrilled. And I have to say um, thank you so much to the real people behind the story because thanks to Philip and Nicole, Sue and Simon and, and BBC, thank you to BBC, I had the privilege of meeting the real people and their courage and their generosity helped us tell the story. So I share this with them. So thank you so much. Thank you, Bafta. The next award is for Editing Factual. To present this award, we have a lexicographer and eti uh, you can't even say it, etymologist. Yeah, another one. And you can't move in television these days for lexicographers and etymologists. <laughs> when, oh when, will they let a gobby chef or a retired footballer have a go? It's Susie Dent. Editing a documentary, I'm told, is a little like having a child, extremely painful, and you hope you end up liking it. Um, all of tonight's nominees have poured over hours and hours of footage to weave captivating stories like no other. Here are the nominees. Editing Factual. Over just a few months, particular enzymes inside her body cease to work. And male hormones start to circulate. Matt Meech, Blue Planet 2, One Ocean. As time passes, her head expands and her chin gets longer. A she has changed into a he. You've got quite a bit of space in here. Quite a bit of space, yeah. yeah. Anna Price, you've got your, Louis um, Theroux, Dark States, Heroin Town. A three-year veteran of the riverbank. He was also a dealer and something of a connoisseur of heroin. I've definitely got some dope. I got the best dope in the city, best dope in the tri-state. That right there is that fire, you know what I'm saying? Wow. See how it's kind of pink? Like it's pinkish looking. Yeah, tiny bit, tiny yeah. pinky gray because it's not straight heroin, it's fentanyl. This is the field, obviously, where I flew the, the Kestrel. I mowed a strip, a strip of grass. I made a hole in the ground where I could put the bird's block, and the bird would sit on the block, and I would fly it in that direction. Will Greyburn, Chris Packham, Asperger's, and me. I'm never going to beat that. It was just perfect. Nigel Book, Blue Planet 2, The Deep. Spent 
spending too long in it can send an eel into toxic shock. It wasn't that he was out of breath. He was like hyperventilating in a way, like tr getting getting his, his energy up. To, Jed Murphy, to David something. Bowie, the last five years. He was quite stoked. Like I, I like to say, in the in the zone, and I could see him through the window that he was really feeling it. Oh, I'll be free. And the BAFTA goes to Will Grayburn. Yeah! For Chris Beckham, and me. I really don't have much to say. Thank you, Charlie. I love you to bits. You're a brilliant director, and thank you to my wife, because I love her to bits, and she's my rock. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, we move on now to the award for Best Titles and Graphic Identity. Please welcome from ITV's Good Karma Hospital, James Krishna Floyd. Auto Q. Ah. Titles play an important part in the ritual of watching television. They cue our hushed anticipation and are the portal into our favourite worlds. Let's take a look at this year's nominees. Titles and graphic identity. William Bartlett, SSGB. BDH Creative, Blue Planet 2. TV, have I got news for you? Morgan Berenger. Top of the Lake, China Girl. goes to William Bartlett for SSGB. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Sally Woodward Gentle and Lee Morris at Sid Gentle Films for giving me um, the chance to do this, as this was actually the first job that I'd ever directed, so it was quite a, you know, they took a chance uh, letting me do this. Um, I'd also like to thank Framestore, where I'd actually worked for 20 years doing visual effects, um, for letting me do a job that made no money for a while, uh, and give me a chance to do it, and um, yeah, thank you very much, and obviously my wife and kids for putting up with me. Thank you very much. Thanks.
Let's move on to special visual and graphic effects sponsored by Autodesk. And to present this award, we last him, saw him aboard the USS Callister, held prisoner by a computer nerd. Now he's here to give one an award. Please welcome Ozzy Ikile. <laughs> Some people say that visual effects artists make television greater than reality. Others say they help you film in some very dirt cheap locations. You can make your own minds up about that. The nominees are... Special Visual and Graphic Effects. Blue Bolt, Colin Gorey Effects. Adam Glassman, Rob Pizey, Taboo. <laughs> DNAG TV, John Clément Zoré. Russell McLean, Joel Collins, Metalhead, Black Mirror. <laughs> Thomas Horton, Free Folk, Double Negative, Invisible. Emerald City. One of us, Asa Shul. Christopher Reynolds, The Crown. Goes to D Neg TV, Jean Clement Sore, Russell McLean, Joel Collins for Metalhead Black Mirror. Oh, this is weird. Uh, wow. Thank you very much for this. Um, <laughs> I'd like to say a massive thank you to Charlie Brooker and Annabelle Jones for uh, creating such a brilliant, unique program. Uh, director David Slade for his incredible vision, his black and white choice, by the way. Uh, Louise Sutton, the, uh, the episode producer, um, and uh, Dean uh, the DNEG guys, Louise Hussey, Hayden Jones, uh, all my uh, supervisors here, uh, Steve Godfrey. Oh, God, sorry, I'm, I'm a bit flustered. <laughs> Basically, all the guys at DNEG, the incredible artists back at DNEG, you guys are absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Good work, man. Cheers. Costume design now, sponsored by Carrot London. Please welcome a man who knows an iron shirt when he sees one, editor-in-chief of British Vogue, Edward Ennefull. Tonight's nominees have inspired audiences and performers alike and brought their respective worlds to vivid, incredible life. Let's take a look. Costume design. 
congratulations. Hello, Linda. Welcome to the extraordinary general meeting of the Shelby Ladies Club. <laughs> Alison McCosh, Peaky Blinders. There are men out there spitting. It's fucking disgusting. No, there's no spit on your back. Don't let us stop you doing what you came in to do. What? It's helped me get through the fucking nightmare of being stuck in this city. Michelle Clapton, Game of Thrones. Majesty, Ghana welcomes you humbly. Yes. Jane Petrie, The Crown. We're very happy to be here. Of course. Ready. Thank you, Majesty. Thank you. Well, you've given him the photo he wanted. Joanna Eatwell, Taboo. Dear God, that walks a dead man. <gasps> Who is that? His hell opened up. Dear Lord Almighty, is that your brother? And the BAFTA goes to Michelle Clapton. Um, this is fantastic. Um, I really think the standard of the um, this, the costumes, this, uh, this this awards is great. I mean, so the three other shows were brilliant, and um, I'm actually quite in shock to get this. Um, so I thank BAFTA and I thank HBO, and um, I thank my crew who are here tonight. Some of them are here tonight. We have so many they couldn't they probably fill this room. Um, and really, you know, my discussions with the director and writers and the sketches and the designs I do would remain just that if it wasn't for the crew that sort of realized them. Um, and so really this is for you all as much as it is for me. Thank you very much. The next award is Sound Factual and to present it from BBC News, Riz Latif. Good evening. Um, now, they told me backstage that this is a bit like a workout. I can tell you they're not wrong. <laughs> we'll just put that safely there. Um, now, as a news presenter, I know how important sound is, trust me. Um, but this takes it to a whole new level, because recording broadcast quality sound in an uncontrolled, unpredictable environment takes real skill. From the Himalayas to coral reefs, and from David Bowie to Richard Hammond, this year's nominees have delved deep and scaled new heights. I don't envy the judges in this one. So let's take a look at tonight's deserving nominees. Sound factual. Andy Deacon, Kevin Duff, Andy James, Mark McLaughlin, World War I Remembered, Passchendaele.
accompanied by a chorus of submarine song, created by fish, shrimps, and other inhabitants of the reef. Graham Wilde, Tim Owens, Kate Hopkins, Blue Planet 2, Coral Reefs. Every resident in this city has its role. Somebody else took his place and brave and cried. I'm a black star. Carl Mainzer, Rowan Jennings, Adam Scarfield, Sean O'Neill, David Bowie, the last five years. How can we mangle the voice? You know, how can we change it and make one person sound like many people and in many different contexts and in many different spatial areas? Russell Edwards, Tristan Powell, Robert Entwistle, Mark Wojtanowski, well, The Grand is, Tour. The RIMAC Concept One, the world's first electric supercar. And listen to that, the hills are alive with the sound of, well, nothing. takes an early lead. <laughs> Graham Wilde, George Fry, James Burchill, like Mountain, Life at the Extreme, Himalaya. Her body has transformed to tackle the conditions. She has up to 50% more hemoglobin in her blood. We did say it was a tough category. And the winners are Graham Wilde, Tim Owens, Kate Hopkins for Blue Planet 2, Coral Reefs. Thank you, BAFTA. Thank you, BBC. Thank you, those really incredible people in the Natural History Unit. We'd like to also thank people who helped our sign side. And, and that didn't come out right. I'd like to mention some people who, although we front, the three of us front, there are some others. So I'd like to thank Diana Smith. I'd like to thank uh, Ben Peace. These are people who work back at the studio. I'd like to thank Hannah Gregory. And don't forget the Foley guy, Ben Jones. And who have I forgotten, Kate? Oh, no, I'll get it and thank the producers, it's fine. Um, I'd like to thank our lovely producers, uh, Mark Brownlow and James Honeybourne. This is an amazing series, and we all feel very privileged to have worked on it. It's done stuff which you could never hope for in the whole kind of idea about kind of thinking about the environment. So. Thank you to all of them. It has been a privilege. Johnny Crew, the one I forgot. Thank you. Now it's time for a change of gear. Please join me in paying tribute to those friends and colleagues we lost this year. Thank you. 
We move on to photography and lighting fiction to present this award from the miniaturist Alex Hassel. We actors like to tell ourselves we're in control of how we look. But the truth is that one light or lens is the difference between looking captivating and looking like a mad old bastard. The nominees are... Photography and lighting, fiction. Are you a homosexual, Mr. Wildblow? Yes, I am. Johan Perry, Against the Law. Thinking back to July 1952, how would you describe your relationship with Edward McNally? I'd become fond of him. He is not educated, but he is intelligent. Mark Passen, Taboo. Adriano Goldman, The Crown. Stefan Pearson, USS Callister, Black Mirror. And the BAFTA goes to Adriano Goldman for the crown. Uh, well, thank you very much to the BAFTAs and my friends at Left Bank, Netflix, my crew, Peter Morgan, Martin Childs, Jane Patry, the cast, Claire Foy, amazing Claire Foy, such an inspiration, and I'm very proud. Thank you very much. It's writer comedy next, and to present this award, he can spot a Catholic hiding in your walls at 30 paces. It's Gunpowder's Sean Dooley. Hiya. Uh, it's a privilege to be here with you all tonight. Um, writing characters that move people is hard enough. Making people laugh and care, well, frankly, that's just witchcraft, and I will hunt you down. <laughs> the nominees tonight are... Writer Comedy. Basically, Mr Perkins was our Woodwork teacher, and he was a massive prick. Yeah. Daisy May he Cooper, Charlie nasty, Cooper, This Country. He always used to say, oh, Kerry and Curtin, you'll do, do nothing, nothing with, with your, your life. life. Which is a bit rich, to be honest, coming from him, who's now dead. Yeah. He's, he's dead. dead, he's dead, he's dead. I think it's disgusting what you is doing, oh. celebrating a man's death. Shut up, Len, you're boring. Yeah, well, I think it's disgusting you not celebrating the man's death. Charming. Hogwarts is that way, Dumbledore. Idiot, man. In the market school. Paul Coleman, Peter Kay, Sean Gibson. 
Peter Kay's Car Share. Sharon Horgan, Rob Delaney, Catastrophe. No, I mean, surgically, there's nothing about me you'd surgically change if you could. No. Not even my saggy tits. They're not saggy. Yeah, they are. I was bending over getting out of the bath the other day and Frankie pointed at them and said tubes. <laughs> Fuck Frankie. Look, are they less like the breasts I would have drawn on my notebook in high school? Maybe. But are they attached to you? Six. Steve Pemberton, Reese Shearsmith, Inside Number Nine. And the back to those two, Steve Pemberton and Reese Shearsmith for Inside Number Nine. That was a funny clip, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, I'm genuinely um, shocked. I didn't. Congratulations, all the other nominees. I'm genuinely surprised uh, that we're in this room. It's fantastic. And Steve's not here. And we've won lots of things before, and Steve's never been here, so I realise he's a fucking jinx. <laughs> However, um, thank you so much. This is brilliant. So, you know, the number nines, they are... Um, it's fantastic that the BBC allow us to do them, thanks to Shane and Chris Sussman and Adam Tandy, our producer. And, you know, they're labours of love, and it's lovely that we get to sit in a room and make up these stories. So thank you very much. This is really, really fantastic. Thank you. Now, entertainment craft team sponsored by Hotcam. Please welcome the star and creator of Game Face, Roisin Connerty. Tonight's nominees have staged enormous events for the enjoyment of millions. They have staged, filmed, and pulled off some of this year's most ambitious television moments. Here are the nominees. <laughs> Entertainment craft team. So don't you worry, don't you worry, child. Cause heaven's got a plan for you. The Voice UK. Don't you worry, don't you worry. So don't you worry, don't you worry, child. Cause heaven's got a World War One remembered, Passchendaele. Strictly come dancing. Of Manchester.
And the BAFTA goes to Nigel Katmer, David Cole, Katie Dawkins, Kevin Duff for World War Remembered Passchendaele. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just a musician who worked with an amazing team here to bring the story of that awful Battle of Passchendaele back to this generation. Thanks to the BBC, Rasheen Archer and Claire Popperwell, their vision and the storyline allowed me to write the music that brought that to life so the modern public understand the horrors of a tremendous war. To BAFTA, Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I'd just like to say thank you to BAFTA, thank you to the BBC, thank you to the amazing team that were part of delivering this event. Um, without that, we couldn't have done that. Um, everybody who's been supporting us uh, in this event, thank you. can't quite believe to be standing here but it's uh, and obviously under, uh, in such great company as the other nominees but uh, thank you so much and really appreciate it thank you um, all been said but a privilege to have been involved in in such a moving event thank you BAFTA thank you BBC events for your support as ever uh, yeah wonderful thank you Time now for Writer Drama, uh, here to present from Being Human and Little Boy Blue, it's Sinead Keenan. Actors are endlessly fascinating, provided somebody else has written something for them to say. Somebody clever, like one of tonight's nominees. Let's take a look. Writer Drama. She got me sixpence. <laughs> she sends me to the shop. Margarine, eggs and bread. And I came back. With the top hat and a coconut. And that was all the money we had. Stephen oh, Knight, week. Peaky Blinders. And my mum beat me with a fucking frying pan. Why the hell did you buy a top hat and a coconut? Because I thought she deserved it. I thought we all did. And I could never understand. Why people like us only had bread and fucking lard? What those girls have been telling me for years, I have been powerless to do anything about because you lot didn't want to know. Well, we want to know now. Nicole Taylor, three girls. And what do you think's been happening to those girls in the meantime? Raped, beaten, not believed. Raped, beaten, not believed. What do you think that does to a kid? And in that time, I've had three prime ministers. Peter Morgan, the crown. All of them ambitious men, clever men, brilliant men. Not one has lasted the course. They've either been too old, too ill, or too weak. A confederacy of elected quitters. Charlie Brooker, Hang the DJ, Black Mirror. You know that noise you make? What noise? <sighs> do I do that? Yeah, you do quite often. Does it bother you? A bit, yeah. I'll try not to. <laughs> OK.
And the BAFTA goes to... Nicole Taylor for Three Girls. BAFTA. Never thought I'd say those words in my life. Throughout the three or more years that I worked on Three Girls, I never looked further than the next draft, and there was always a next draft. The goal never changed. It was to try and reward the time and trust that people had invested in me, and they invested so, so much. Thank you, first and foremost, to the girls, the real Amber, Holly and Ruby. to Sarah Robotham and Maggie Oliver, and to the BBC and the mighty Charlotte Moore for having the brass balls to commission this and to stick with it all the way. <laughs> Thank you to Sue Hogg, executive producer of Three Girls, mentor and friend, and to Simon Lewis who produced it. It was simply unmakeable without these two. Philippa Lothorpe, director, what a woman. She gets the best work out of everyone because of who she is, her openness, her mega intellect, and her total lack of ego. And working with her has made me a much better writer. Thank you, Una. <laughs> Philippa. Now, Una has never met a nightmarish structural problem in episode two that she didn't solve with unbelievable panache. So thank you, Una. Thank you to Hilary Salmon, Lucy Richer, and Helene Fox at the BBC. Joe Phillips, my amazing agent. Laura Timms, who managed a ton of the research. Nazir Afsal, Matt Baker, Andrew Norfolk of The Times, who broke the story in the first place and was unfailingly generous with me, my mum and dad, and to Poppy and our wee Guthrie. Uh, when Three Girls was broadcast and millions watched it, it felt like such a hopeful moment at how aghast and outraged people were. But we know that what went on is still going on in Telford and Newcastle. It was on the front pages this morning, which makes standing here feel like the least radical and most irrelevant thing on earth. But even whilst acknowledging the limits of drama, I will always be so proud of three girls and amazed by the response to it. It's given me the courage to keep on writing about what I want to write about and what I want to see, stories about women and Britain and women you don't normally see on TV. And in the longer term, it's on all of us to find a way of showing Amber, Holly and Ruby that this amazing world of wee statues is their world as well, and that they don't need to simply be a subject of drama, they can be its author. Thank you very much. It's uh, sound fiction time uh, to present this award. We have two actors from inside number nine, Jagan EA, sorry, IA, I beg your pardon, and from Lovesick, Hannah Britland. There you are, baby. People tend to say that television is a purely visual medium. Tonight's nominees would probably disagree. High quality sound is vital to great drama. Let's get an earful of tonight's nominees. Sound fiction. Hey. Forbes Noonan, Ben Norrington, Jim Goddard, Grant Bridgman, Kiki Blinders. He even showed me a photograph here before I met you at the fight. So I said, Margate, right here I am. So come on, Tommy. Look at you me. You know, it's an honourable reason now to pull that trigger. So why Alfie, you look at it, me. Mate? Fucking get on with it. And stop acting like a little girl. Alfie. What are you doing John Rodder, Tim Cavigan, Kenny Clark, Michael Marusus, USS Callister, Black Mirror. Killing a 
Alice won't make us tell you how the crystal works, Valdak. We will never... Oh, hold on, I think my pizza's here. Pause game. I realize this marriage has turned out to be something quite different to what we both imagined. Understatement. Sound team, the crown. And that we find ourselves in it. Prison. A situation that is unique. The exit route which is open to everyone else. Divorce. Yes, divorce. It's not an option for us. Ever. Sound team, taboo. Sound team, Sherlock. You don't know about Redbeard yet. Six. Sherlock! Five. Sherlock, stop at once! Four. Three. It goes to the crown. Um, unusual to be here alone. They're catching up, I think. Um, as, as always, always come on. brilliant team from Boom coming up last. Thank you very much. Um, I want to thank my, my fantastic team on the floor. James Harris, Duran Darkins, Nina Rice, Joe Carey. They did a brilliant job with us. Um, and thank you, BAFTA, and thank you, Left Bank, and thank you, you guys, for sorting out my mess. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, same. Andy Harry's at Left Bank, uh, Peter Morgan, uh, our lovely director, Philip Martin, and the rest of the team back at Boom. Thank you. And a quick thank you to Alex and Josh, and happy birthday, Tamsi. <laughs> Uh, makeup and hair design now, sponsored by MAC Cosmetics and Makeup Artist Magazine. To present this award, you may know her as a slave girl who rebelled and then immediately exploded in Guardians of the Galaxy. Tough break, but we know her as Ophelia Loverbond. Makeup and hair designers are truly an actor's best friend. When I arrive in the makeup trailer in the morning, I, believe it or not, look like Wurz of Gummidge. Um, but by the time they finish with me, I leave looking like Sally from Wurz of Gummidge. God bless them all. Um, here are the nominees. Makeup and hair design. My new home is beautiful and I want for no material thing. He is like a man which built a house. Chrissy Baker. The miniaturist. Foundations upon a rock. Johannes' sister Marin is and doeth not, very godly he is like a man and takes great interest in our diet. Built his house upon the earth. As for Johannes, he treats me with great kindness. Lars Schiavo. Kiki Blinders. <laughs> Jan 
Archibald, Erica Ockvist, Audrey Doyle, Taboo. Are you a papist? Jacqueline Fowler, Gunpowder. What do you have to say for yourself? Archibald, Erica Ockfist, Audrey Doyle for Taboo. What a surprise. <laughs> so thank you so much, BAFTA, for this. It's a, a big <laughs> thank you. And, and I'd like to thank our pr lovely producers and the production team that we worked with and the whole, um, the whole team really very inspired. It was a very, um, uh, it was a kind of inspired production to work on. Every day was challenging and um, doesn't always happen. So we had a great time, and thank you, everybody. I love your hair. I hope you win. Um, <laughs> I'd like to thank Hardy Baker and Son, um, and Scott Free and BBC. And above all, I'd like to thank my gorgeous friend, uh, Tom Hardy, um, and personal makeup for him. He's a legend, and without all of um, this, Tom Hardy and his dad, Chips, made this all happen. And thank you. And my sister's over there. <laughs> and on top of that, we all would like to thank our team, because without it, this would not be happening. No. Because our, our team was amazing. So thank you very much, the Taboo Makeup and Hair Team. <laughs> Next up, it's Photography Factual, sponsored by The Farm. Were the Cavaliers and Roundheads just the mods and rockers of their day? Was the girl in the pearl earring wearing it ironically? When will it be acceptable for me to dust off my big old muff? Our next presenter can answer all these questions and more. It's fashion historian Amber Bouchard. Okay, so tonight's nominees have braved crime scenes, war zones, and the depths of the ocean to bring us images that inform, challenge, and inspire us. Here's a selection of their incredible work. Photography Factuals. 
ساعات ابو عمارة في هذه الحياة الدنيا الفانية قد باتت معدومة اوليفييي صابيل ذا فايت فروم موزو قاعدين على الجهاد Camera team, Blue Planet Two, One Ocean. Places that are safer to commit crime, and other places that kind of don't exist to people going about their everyday business. Daniel Vernon, Daniel Dewsbury, the detectives, murder on the streets. There's a completely different world, and you end up in sometimes just dark corners. Blind spots without witnesses. Fadi Al Halabi, Hassan Katan, Thayer Mohammed, last men in Aleppo. And the BAFTA goes to the camera team for Blue Planet 2, One Ocean. very quick thing thank you so much to everybody for this but um obviously the whole thing wouldn't be possible without our incredible team behind us and more so than that the whole thing wouldn't be possible without the natural world that that we see so. yeah i have such um incredible strong recollections as an aspiring cameraman about 15 years ago watching blue planet and sort of doing screen grabs and breaking it down and not in a million years would I have dreamed that 15 years later I'd actually be here to accept this on behalf of, of the whole team. So thank you, BAFTA, and um, congratulations to all my colleagues who, you know, around the world who contributed to the series. Um, I also want to thank the Natural History Unit who in many ways have defined the DNA of natural history filmmaking. Um, especially uh, Jonathan Smith who produced the show, uh, Mark Brownlow, the series producer, um, and, uh, and then obviously all to our, our families who supported us when we were away. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now it's time for Director Multicamera, presented by the Chairwoman of Lloyds Bank and owner of Lloyds Pharmacy, Cariad Lloyd. none of those things. To choose to direct just one camera is bold. To choose two is bold and daring. But to choose multiple cameras to direct and master them is bold, daring and sensationally magnificent. Tonight mem tonight's members of the BDSM club are... <laughs> Director Multicamera. We're coming to you from the Alaskan wilderness, a whopping four and a half thousand miles away from the UK. 
James Morgan, Wild Alaska Live. Orcas, they're all coming together for a spectacular summertime feast that's fueled by 300 million salmon. One of the greatest gatherings of wildlife on our planet is happening right here, right now. We're ready, they're hungry. This is Wild Alaska Live. Nikki Parsons, Strictly Come Dancing. Against all of the songs you can sing. Julia Knowles, World War I love, remembered, Passchendaele. You lose, and winter will turn into spring. And the snow falls, the wind calls, and the year turns round again. And like barley corn, who rose from the grave? The song is nearly done, there's no need for this way. We'll all be back again next year, but love will take away. Chris Power, Ant and Dex Saturday Night Takeaway. <laughs> And the BAFTA goes to Julian Knowles for World War One Remembered Passchendaele. me. Um, I am incredibly nervous and yet when I embarked on directing this event I was calm and um, we sailed through. Uh, thank you very much to BAFTA. Thank you to the incredible team behind this show. It was in immensely emotional to do this and take a piece of history and translate it for today and sadly it is still very relevant what happened um, and it breaks my heart to think that we might be making another show about another terrible calamity. But at least we made a beautiful event, a beautiful program. Thank you to Roisin Archer for creating the show, to Claire and Phil for championing events like this. And I think they should be on television, so I really appreciate that. To all of the team who won the Craft BAFTAs, to Kate, to Nigel, to Kevin, to David. Um, there are so many people, but, but three people who have traveled a long road with me in television, um, going right the way back to L7, revealing more than we expected on the word. Um, who many people here won't remember the word, but I do remember the word. Um, remember the word? Good, okay. So my, my camera supervisor, Phil Petrovsky, who's absolutely incredible. Um, Naomi Newfeld, vision mixer, who is extraordinary. Um, Monique Ratner, who is my script supervisor and keeps me in place. Three people who have helped me be the director that I am today, and I really appreciate that. Um, but mostly thank you to my lovely husband, Peter Jameson, who sets me out the door striding, and when I come home is there to help me remember that it isn't just all about television. So thank you very much indeed, but I appreciate it. Production design now, sponsored by Microsoft. Uh, to present this award from humans, it's Ruth Bradley. The production designers nominated this year show us the range of the craft. They've created historical palaces and fantasy castles, 
contemporary war zones, and retro spaceships. And the nominees are... Production Design Deborah Riley, Rob Cameron, Game of Thrones. Campbell, The State. Man's on five star G high. <laughs> Joel Collins, Phil Sims, USS Callister, Black Mirror. We have a new member of the team, science officer Nanette Cole. Please, take your post. I believe we finally managed to track Valdak to an uncharted planet. No. Take your post, that is an order. I'm not doing this. The whole thing's much better if you let yourself get into it. You think that I'm playing along with your Space Force bullshit? Space Fleet. Martin Childs, Alison Harvey, The Crown. All right, all of you. Hello, everyone. Hmm. I'd like you to say hello to our guest of honor, Her Royal Highness, the Princess Margaret. Hello. 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 And the BAFTA goes to Deborah Riley, Rob Cameron for A Game of Thrones. I'm incredibly honoured to be here tonight and to be honoured by BAFTA in this way. I'm also very proud and very honoured to be standing here with Rob Cameron, our set decorator, and to also be down there on table 10 with all of the art directors. Christina Moore, Halco Richter, Phil Elton, Nick Wilkinson, and the man who stood beside me only half a step away all the time, our supervising art director, Paul Ghiridani. But as we know from tonight that none of these shows make themselves, and there are hundreds of people back in Belfast who will be just as excited about this as I am, and in particular our construction manager, Tom Martin, who I wish could also share this with us. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'd like to just echo the words of Debs and just thanks to all our team back in uh, sunny Belfast. Thank you. <laughs> Time now for original music. Here to present the award from Murdered by My Father and Black Mirror, Kiran Sonia Sawa. Hey, women! <laughs> Here we go. Natural segue into music. Um, I, having an original piece of music written to underscore your performance is as special as acting gets. Nothing makes you feel more impressive than an oboe kicking in when you raise an eyebrow. Loki freaking out because Daisy May Cooper is sat right there. Anyway, the nominees are... <laughs> original music. Jocelyn Pook, King Charles III. Yeah. 
Mihailova, born to be free, saving Russia's whales. Max Richter, Taboo. You could, you don't want anyone. Don't I? And soon no one will want you. Yes, they will. <laughs> but they shan't have her, shall they, Tibbs? Oh, I shouldn't think so. Nico Muley, Howard's End. to get this award. Thank you so much. Um, whew, um, huge thank you to all the musicians, first of all, um, and, and singers who performed on the soundtrack. Um, in particular, Melanie Pappenheim, Belinda Sykes, Voya Zivkovich, um, Harvey Braff, and to my ever-patient sound engineer, Steve Parr. Um, I, when I first... Um, when I first read Mike Bartlett's brilliant script for King Charles III, I was absolutely smitten. And even though I was incredibly busy at the time, I knew I must somehow make time for this project. And I, I'm so glad I did. It's been one of the most rewarding projects. Um, it's an incredible journey um, from its humble beginnings at the Almeida Theatre and then um, transferring to the West End, Broadway, and then finally to TV. Um, thank you to the Drama Republic for making that possible. Uh, whew, the creative team and actors were a joy to work with, and it was a particular pleasure and honor to work alongside the late Tim Pickett-Smith, who played Charles, and who was, as well as being a virtuoso actor, was a super kind, exceptional person who would just brighten up everyone's day. Um, I also want to say thank you to Rupert Gould, the director, for inviting me in the first place to be part of the team. It's been a wonderful, inspiring project to be part of. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. You forgot it! You forgot it. <laughs> it's amazing. And it's written on music script, by the way, your speech. <laughs> amazing. Come on. Yes, Next up, Director Fiction, sponsored by Three Mill Studios, here to present from Shetland, the programme, not the place, is Mark Bonner. Good, Good evening. Hello. Um, I've always been incredibly in awe of directors. On set, a director becomes your sounding board, your collaborator, your motivator, your inspiration and your bad acting detector. Uh, the fact that they do that for everyone whilst manoeuvring armies of people around and deliver the most fragile of things, the story, 
at the end of it all is gobsmacking. Tonight's four gobsmacking directors are... Director Fiction. Oh. Oh. Mackenzie Crook, Detectorist. I didn't even touch it. I, I hadn't picked it up. I wanted to take a photo of it in situ. Did you see it? You, the glint of gold as it flew away. Did you see it? Well, we saw a glint. Reese's family have requested we remember their beloved son, not by the traditional minute silence, but by applause. Paul Whittington, Little Boy Blue. Can you please pay tribute to a young boy who loved life and loved Everton Football Club. Jane Campion, Top of the Lake, China Girl. I enjoy school and having fun with my friends. Thank you for having me. Philippa Lothorpe, three girls. The sooner you start telling the truth, Holly, the sooner these men can get on with their real work. Stop wasting their time on teenage idiots. No, 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 Daddy, Daddy! Oh, Daddy! <laughs> And the winner is Philippa Lothar for three girls. I haven't prepared a speech. I'm really sorry. I, I just didn't think that would happen. Um, I just want to say this was the most difficult drama I have ever, ever had the privilege of making, and also the most rewarding, and also the most important. And I just want to say thank you so much to Sue Hogg for asking me to direct this and to Simon Lewis for producing it. To Charlotte Moore. We couldn't have made it without you, Charlotte. Your, your tremendous, tremendous support for this pro program gave me such courage in the directing of it. I'd love to thank Nicole Taylor, a wonderful, fabulous writer, scriptwriter. And my wonderful friend and beautiful collaborator in the cutting room, Una Miganila. Um, I'd love to thank Matt Gray, a fabulous cinematographer, and all my wonderful team who helped me make this, and the fantastic cast, particularly the young girls who hadn't really done very much before, and they gave me there all and I'd really really like to thank the British Pakistani actors who were brave enough to play the part of the perpetrators in this film. They, gave, they, they themselves come from communities and they brought us so much to this project. We listened to them, didn't we Nicole? We, we spent a lot of time and they taught us an awful lot. Thank you to Hilary Salmon and to Lucy Richard at the BBC as well. Thank you so much. I just want to say, speaking as a woman director, I hope this gives people the courage to 
really get women directors directing more. I think that women have such a valuable role in our world of filmmaking. They have fantastic voices. And I hope this encourages other women to come and make their films. incredible honour and I really I'm going to dedicate this fabulous BAFTA to the real girls who gave us their stories. Thank you. The penultimate award is for Director Factual and here to present it is an actual real life boffin, a rocket scientist and presenter of the sky at night, Dr Maggie Adderin Pocock. I apologise, I brought notes because auto cues terrify me because I'm dyslexic. Anyway. <laughs> On this day, the 22nd of April, every year, we celebrate Earth Day. It's an opportunity for us to enhance our understanding of this amazing orb that we live on and to find better ways to nurture it. Now, some would say that we needed to travel out into space to appreciate the world we live on, or what Carl Sagan described as the pale blue dot, our small, very beautiful, and yet fragile planet. A good director lets us embark on a similar journey. They look at the familiar around us, but they see it with a different eye. And then with dogged determination and sometimes perilous persistence, they take us on that journey with them, granting us a glimpse into a parallel universe, the universe of their imaginations, and allowing us access to the very stars themselves. The nominees for Director Factual are... Director Factual. Was the last one Sarah Lloyd. Mm. Anna Hall, yeah, Catching a Killer, one. The Search for Natalie Hemming. No, I shouldn't have said her. Oh, no, I shouldn't have said her. Come on, but you can't say like that, darling. You can't. It wasn't your fault, Mum. It wasn't. It was oh, no, I shouldn't have said her. I knew I must be wrong. No. And that's the thing. Listen, this is not your fault. The only fault it is is his. Not your fault. <laughs> That was um, an enormous sort of turning point, really. Charlie Russell, Chris Packham, Asperger's and, and me. The impact that it had just goes on. And I know that's crazy. A lot of people are just going to think that's mad. You're just standing in a patch of nettles underneath an oak tree where a bird died a long, long time ago. Too big for a, for a small boy. Way too big for a small boy. A small boy that didn't really connect with um, other small boys or most adults either. Basically, go begging or, or sometimes shoplifting or whatever to go and get some money. Xavier Alford, Drugsland, Heroin Love Story. Sometimes you have to put them few, like, through a few times. Oh, right. By about half eleven or whatever, we've usually got enough money to go and score. Get back about half twelve. And all day for the rest of the day, then, is literally making money, going to school, doing the drugs. Will Yap, the real full Monty. Congratulations to all the nominees. And the BAFTA goes to Charlie Russell for Chris Packham, Asperger's and Me.
Blimey, I really didn't expect that. Um, so I want to thank a, a really small, wonderful team, Will Grayburn and Lizzie Kempton, Tom Barry, Patrick Smith, um, and an amazing BBC team who never really said no, um, Craig Hunter and Abby Priddle and Tom McDonald. Um, this is for Chris, whose exceptional mind never, never let me get away with being uh, an average director, which I can often be. Um, and for my amazing wife, Lara, who's always there with me. Thank you. It's time now for our final award, the special award, presented by BAFTA Chair Jane Lush. Hi. Yes, it's me again. Tonight, I'm very excited to be presenting BAFTA's special award to one of television's most successful franchises, Game of Thrones. <laughs> At the Craft Awards, we want to celebrate the efforts of the whole production team, whose skills have been such a major part of its success. These are the people who have pushed the boundaries of their crafts to create an extraordinary world. It's truly a broadcasting phenomenon. Not only has it attracted record number of viewers to HBO, but its international following is hugely loyal, super passionate and devoted. Game of Thrones has also been a massive critical success, praised for its complex characters, storyline, scope, and production values. Astonishingly, it's won more than 200 awards and picked up a couple more tonight, including BAFTA's Audience Award, and is the most awarded series in Emmy's history with a total of 38 wins. We're so proud that it's truly a British production. Based in Northern Ireland, much of the series is filmed there, including most of the interior scenes. It features the work of some of the UK's best craftspeople, from casting and costume design to special visual effects. It's also offered incredible roles for both established on-screen talent, as well as great opportunities to the new generation of British actors, something we at BAFTA believe is so important. With its final series currently in production, honoring this epic show tonight feels timely and befitting. Game of Thrones has rightly been credited with not only supporting the TV industry in the UK, but with creating one in Northern Ireland that will leave a legacy long after the series ends. Let's take a moment to find out more. Special Awards. During the interview process, I remember admitting to Dan and David that I'd never worked in television before. And uh, I remember very clearly down the phone, David Benioff said to me, oh, this isn't television. Team runs full whack at about 100. So we have like we have two full teams running two different units, and then we have the extras teams that can run at you know, 40 people. And we have our breakdown team, which is probably 15 people. We have the armor, which is about 10 people, and then the workroom, which is again about 18, 19 people. And then you have the designers, and assistants, and supervisors, and the wardrobe mistresses. So it's just this epic organisation really. We just took this on board as if it was going to be shown on a feature film screen. We'd never done television and even to this day we have no differentiation between the two. Your audiences are more sophisticated, you can't cut corners. When I think back on it, it was just a wonderful, you thought you really did think you were in another world. When this came up I was intrigued because I know that it was a very ambitious set of characters and issues. Not least was the fact that we had to shoot two units at the same time and not necessarily in the same country, but with the same actors going backwards and forwards. There is something that is the Game of Thrones machine, and the way Game of Thrones has to work is very special. It's not film, and it's not strictly television either. There's so many parts to create one massive machine, and 
they all have to be of an incredibly high standard, otherwise it shows. That was always the great thing about being involved in Game of Thrones, was the quality of the production from every angle. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. From the very earliest sort of script meetings that I'll attend, um, we then start the concept artists almost immediately. So for every key scene, for every key set or prop, we have you know beautiful concept art produced that David and Dan will then approve. That piece of artwork then becomes key for all of the different departments going forward, from the cinematographer and the way they light it to maybe the model maker and how that sort of prop is built and what material it's made out of, or special effects or visual effects and what they have to add. It's like the one document that we all hold and all being well on shoot day is something that we've managed to recreate. The great thing about Dave and Dan is they rarely said, this is what we want. They sort of let Gemma and myself and Deb design something and then, then they may come in and say, well, this is a bit too far for us or this could be better here. So they'll come in and guide you. And it was a big thing for them. It was their first big, big series. So it was a learning curve for all of us. You can't win the throne if you're dead. You can't break the wheel if you're dead. So what would you have me do? Nothing. They've lived and breathed this project, I think, for the, certainly the couple of years beforehand. So everything that evolved was essentially coming through their eyes. Their feeling was for, for us, or for me certainly, just to try and do whatever seemed fit. And they would give me some reaction. And it was always positive, I have to say. <laughs> In order for you to create your character, it is the look and the feel is the first opening of a door right. into that world in that respect. And then you have the dialogue, then you have the script. Ten is too young to see such things. He won't be a boy forever. And winter is coming. They brought so much fantastic, incredible writing, you know, and, uh, and, and naturally flowing writing and adventurous, you know, they've, they've just gone out on a limb. They thought we're not gonna follow the normal formula. David and Dan were very, very concise. They really worked together as a team. They really knew what they wanted. The biggest thing for them in season one was more blood, more blood, more blood. Post was so fast. We had three months, having shot for six months, and we were already posting before we had finished filming. So they were so flat out with trying to keep up with script rewrites, find out what was going on set, keep an eye on that, and then we were already posting at the same time. So I think what those two achieve is phenomenal. One of Dan and David's great talents was they managed to corral a whole lot of workaholic perfectionists into one place working on one project. Certainly the show wouldn't be where it is without everybody's dedication to it and love of it. We were always under pressure. You might have maybe 10 characters in per day and you know how long each character takes to go through the process of makeup and the hair. Speed is of the essence, so one has to work the best way to achieve the effects that you want in the limited time that you have. But I think everybody just felt that was the way to go. We just wanted to, to make it the best thing we, we could. Although we pull our magic out in post, we have to get a lot of stuff practically while we're shooting. We had to have a big element shoot at the end. I think we got a day or two. I think now they get a month. Um, so the camera department, the lighting guys, everyone was really collaborative and everyone would, would pull out whatever they needed to in order to get it done in this record-breaking speed that we were making the show at. I don't think anyone knew the scale it was ever going to become and I don't think anyone realised how successful it was going to be after season one. The scale of the show, especially initially, was really overwhelming. I hadn't really ever had such a huge department before. Armour, I hadn't designed armour before and suddenly I had a whole armory asking me questions. They were brilliant because they did guide me. I'd say, I really want something like this. And they'd say, well, look, you have to think how they bend. So I think it's really important to talk to people about what you're doing. The actors as well, you know, I try and engage with them and I try and listen to what they're saying and how they feel things should be. It's just meticulously researched for a real world. Everything had to be grounded in a reality, otherwise, how do you play fantasy? You can't. You just create real people. That's how you play anything. 
I had my study, Ned Stark's study, with all these little, interesting, quirky objects. It was of the highest quality, you know, so much thought had gone into it. People might not appreciate, but it's all there. There's no shortcuts. I loved it so much because they allowed me to make things properly, things that you can look at, you know, from like five centimetres away and actually go, God, that's hand-stitched. I mean, all of the costumes, everything we do, the sets, everything, they are real. They're made in an authentic way by incredibly skilled craftspeople. It's helped this huge resurgence of craft, and it's such a big thing we talk about now, but when Game of Thrones started, especially in television, there wasn't the possibility to do it. I mean, of course, there were big shows before, but I think Game of Thrones really allowed people to be the best they could be. The British are so famous for being so very well trained within the art department. Nowhere else would they have been able to cope with this degree of detail and this degree of historical sort of references. It's been wonderful that they chose to remain in the north of Ireland, in Belfast, and the gift that that has given is extraordinary in terms of employment, income, reputation. A lot of the teaching facilities now, particularly from makeup, I mean, there's a lot of interest because of Game of Thrones. It has focused the mind on people wanting to work in this business, so I hope we're able to capitalize on that. I don't think any other television series in the world has done this well. And I think the fact that it's shot in, in the UK and it's predominantly UK crew is something to be so proud of. To receive the Craft Special Award is just so amazing because it doesn't only recognise the heads of department, it recognises all the people that actually make it possible. I can draw a costume, but it's the people that create it, that stitch it, that colour it, that dye it, that paint it, that break it, are the people who actually I think this is really for. It's fascinating to watch them at work, carpenters, the ironsmiths, the weavers, the list is endless. They were a major, major part in the success of the show. For these incredible artisans to be recognised is just a wonderful achievement, so thank you, BAFTA. It's just absolutely wonderful to be recognised by the British Academy because this is the home of Game of Thrones. And certainly as the show comes to an end, how perfect is that? season at the moment and so aren't able to be here in person. So to collect the award on behalf of the programme, please welcome John Bradley, who plays Samuel Tarley, and Hannah Murray, his fictional other half, Gilly, mother of baby Sam. Good evening. It feels quite, it actually feels quite strange just for two, any two people to be up here trying to collect this award on behalf of such a vast team, but we're very, very proud to be here. When I did my first day's work on Game of Thrones nearly eight years ago, I knew nothing of how TV production worked. I remember getting my first call sheet the day before I shot my very first scene and not really knowing what I was looking at, and I read that the scene was two pages long, and I thought, well, how long can that possibly take? <laughs> I was always under the impression that they just had the set and they set 20, 30 cameras up, hidden cameras in little nooks and crannies around the set. They kicked the actors into the set. We did it a couple of times and then we went home. In fact, what I thought when I first saw that it was going to be two pages long was, what on earth am I going to do with my afternoon? <laughs> And now, but the point is, after all these years, I look back on that first day and I'm struck by how lucky I am. I was given such an incredible learning experience, the best learning experience in the world, working alongside some of the very best craftspeople at work anywhere. Uh, we as actors will forever owe a huge debt of gratitude for them, for inspiring us every single time we walk onto the set and every single time we see the finished product on the screen. Every day learning something new from them and every day finding new things to admire them for. When you see so many phenomenally talented people in so many departments working at the very top of their game and getting breathtaking results time after time, it really forces you to bring your very best efforts to the table, if only to make sure that you don't look inadequate by comparison. Every year they're given scripts that on paper seem totally unfilmable and every time they put it on the screen to mind-blowing effect. 
We, as actors, are so lucky to get to step into the world they create, and we are as in awe of their work as the fans of the show all over the world. The show is a global phenomenon, and what makes us proudest is that the work of so many British and Irish talents are being recognised on such a grand scale. We know that our showrunners, David and Dan, are as grateful to be working with this incredible team of people. Sadly, they couldn't be here tonight as they're busy shooting our final season, but they've sent this special message. Hi, I'm David Benioff. And I'm D.B. Weiss. We are the writers, co-creators, and, and producers of Game of Thrones, and we want to thank you all at BAFTA for uh, honoring us with this award, and we're very sorry that we couldn't be there tonight. Um, we all know that it, uh, one person doesn't make a film or a TV show, and two people don't make a film or a TV show, but dozens and hundreds of people make a film or a TV show. Uh, it's uh, fitting to honor the craftspeople who uh, work on this show and who make this show because every single thing that you see and that we get to put in every single frame of Game of Thrones is something that is lovingly crafted and designed and built by these people. Every day we are in awe of what we see them turn out and we are very, very fortunate to be working with uh, craftsmen, craftswomen of their caliber. So. On their behalf, thank you very much. We're very sorry we couldn't be there with you, but uh, we hope you all have a great night. Thank you so much. It turns, it turns out that's how tired you look after being in charge of Game of Thrones for 10 years. Um, thank you, um, thank you um, so much for this, BAFTA, and uh, I believe that that um, we're going to invite some people to the stage now, H. Yeah. You can do it. <laughs> um, yeah, as you know, we have some of the very talented cross people here tonight, and we would love to welcome them to the stage. Congratulations, the Game of Thrones cast and crew. Well that is it. Dinner is coming. Yes! <laughs> Congratulations. I'm not going to hold up dinner a second longer. It's coming. Thank you so much. Good night.